It's about that time of day again here, boys and girls. Welcome back, welcome back. My name is Joseph James. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter for Tuesday evening, July 29th, 2014. The 29th day of July. Woo! This summertime is cruising here. Almost through the almost the month of July, we get the month of August right around the corner here. And as always, we have an exciting newsletter for you this evening, boys and girls. Jam-packed here with useful information. So you guys will know, first of all, we'll talk about exactly what happened today in the markets. Markets reacting to fresh sanctions from the EU against Russia. Uh, volatility increasing ahead of tomorrow's FOMC. We've got earnings reports shaking up all the E-minis right now. Boy, the list just keeps going on and on and on about what happened today. So we'll talk about first what happened today in the markets. Second thing is, is we'll take a look at tomorrow's schedule. We get a lot of important Red Star news on the calendar for tomorrow. Definitely do not want to miss that portion of the newsletter for you tonight. And the third thing we'll do is we'll open up those charts and give you some strategies, right? What if price goes higher? What if price goes lower? And what if price goes sideways? You will be ready for it. By the end of the newsletter here tonight, you'll know exactly what happened today in the markets. You can impress your friends. You'll know exactly what is on schedule for tomorrow. So you're ready for that big red star news at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning and 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. And then you'll know exactly what to be looking for tomorrow as you navigate through these uh, somewhat choppy markets ahead of tomorrow's FOMC report. All righty, you ready to rock and roll? Seatbelts fastened? Let's jump right in here this, morning, or this afternoon, as you say. It is still uh, afternoon here in Los Angeles. First things first, though, before we jump into charts here tonight, I do want to remind you that all the good stuff is over here at SidewaysMarkets.com. If you're watching this video on our YouTube page right now, if you're not on our blog right now, make sure you find the link below the video. That way we can make sure you get over here to Sideways Markets for three reasons, right? Three big important reasons here to get on over to Sideways Markets. Reason number one. Right below the video, you can download all of our charts, and I'm now tossing in some bonus charts, all right? There are going to be some charts in here tonight that you're not going to see in tonight's newsletter. Aha! See? Give you a little reason there to go download those charts. Besides the fact that you want to have those charts ready with you tomorrow morning when I open up my trade room at 8 a.m. Eastern Time, right? I warned you for it, so, so pause the video download today's charts and then there's about a half dozen bonus charts that I added in which were alternate time frames different viewpoints of these three markets right so an added bonus there for all you folks who take me up on this offer and download my charts the second thing here today upper left hand corner I have a special free pass for you guys here today now maybe you're wondering You've been watching the newsletter for a few weeks now. You keep seeing us knock the seams off the ball the past few weeks, right? I mean, heck, look at last night's newsletter. Sell gold, sell crude, sell Russell. Russell's about setting up right now. Crude dropped, gold dropped. You know this stuff works, right? How could you not see this stuff works? So maybe now you want to see how do we actually profit from these trade calls. Well, I've got a special invite for you to come out and join me in my trade room as a guest. So you'd be a fool not to take me up on that offer, guys. Come out and I'll show you exactly how we trade in our live trade room. Third thing here today, lower left-hand corner right above my ugly mug, all I need is your name and your email address, and I'll put you on my nightly newsletter mailing list. That way you always get every single newsletter when it gets sent out. No more no more reloading the blog page. No more hanging out by the YouTube page, right? Now I'm going to tell you exactly when it's time to go check out that newsletter. I'll send you an email when it goes out, all right? So three things here. Pause the video real quick. Download today's charts, including those bonus charts that I've added in there, which you will not see covered in today's video. Second thing here, take me up on that offer, right, for your free pass. I know you're intelligent enough to know that. And then, of course, the third thing is, is grab a copy of that newsletter mailing list, name and email address. All right. Now you know the plan here today. Let's jump right in here, guys. First of all, what happened today? Well, again, Talk about this a little bit already. End of the month, right? The end of the month of July, we got some volatility picking up ahead of the month of August. 
Markets very volatile here today for the E-minis. We had the, of course, earnings season, right? The month after the month after the end of each quarter, right? In case you're wondering, earnings season, right? This is what I'm talking about right now. When is the end of each quarter? You should know this because this is when the E-minis roll over, right? What's the first end of the first quarter? March. Second one. June. Yeah, you know this, right? September, you got it. And then, of course, December. So markets are real, well, the E-minis right now, right, are volatile this week because of earnings season. So when is this earnings season? It sounds like it's all the time. Well, it's not all the time, but it is relatively frequently. It's the month that follows. So it would be April. It would be, you got it, July, right? It would be the month after September, Right, count it out there. You got it, right? There's only one month after September, October. And then, of course, you got the month of December being another end of the quarter, right? So you got January, all right? So these are the earnings season months. Now, I subscribe to a news service that tells me exactly when those reports will be coming out. You can, of course, benefit from that sitting in my trade room. So right now, we can see that we are right in the thick of things here in the month of July, right? So earnings season in full steam ahead, right? Month of August, all these earnings reports will have already come out here for the end of the second quarter, right? So you'll also be hearing from GDP tomorrow for the second quarter as well, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so almost out of the woods there, right? Almost out of the woods there, but markets today were reacting to earnings season. And of course, the E-minis are stock indexes. So of course, those will be the ones that are most susceptible to it. We also heard about fresh sanctions straight out of the EU this morning, headed towards Russia. And of course, it wouldn't be a trading day without the Russian and Ukrainians taunting each other, firing missiles back and forth. Oh, it wasn't me. Somebody fired us. Somebody fired a missile into why would you think it was me? Why don't you blame some other country in Eastern Europe, right? Right, right, right. So Russia and Ukraine, right, they keep going back and forth, continuing to taunt each other. Meanwhile, everyone seems to have forgotten about the fact these morons shot down a passenger airliner with hundreds of innocent people and have now tried to bury evidence somewhere in the Russia. I'm not going to go anywhere with that, but I'll let you guys do the research on that. Next up, We've also got gold with contract rollover. Gold will be rolling over to contract, the 1214 contract later on this week. Whew, we got lots of news out of Europe coming around the corner. Markets are preparing for FOMC tomorrow. I'll tell you, a lot of stuff happening in the markets today. All right, a lot of stuff happening. But out of all the chaos out there, if you followed last night's newsletter, go back and watch it. Sell short on gold. That's exactly what happened today. Nice big, nice big bearish candle here on gold. Nice big down day here on gold today. Yeah, we're still stuck in the mud here, right? We're still stuck in the bigger picture middle here right now. But it was relatively easy for us yesterday here to make that call on gold. So gold pushes lower here today. Again, still stuck in the mud, though, around this 1,300 big round number. And you've got to remember, if there's one market that will be affected tomorrow during FOMC, you're looking at it here, boys and girls, gold and the U.S. dollar, right? Those will be the ones that are most impacted by FOMC as well as non-farm payrolls. Moving forward here now, we can easily see here that that short on gold is well underway here today. You can see here, gave you guys that short set up here last night, recommending that we sell the 6.7, 11.2, and you can see that's exactly what has happened here uh, today. Targets here down bottom, I get 87.5, 85.1, right? You can see these levels marked up here below. So we'll be using those as our profit targets. The one thing you've got to be aware of though for tomorrow is that if we start trading sideways tomorrow, if we do not continue to go lower here as of 10.30 a.m., all right, 10.30 a.m. tomorrow, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time, if you are not seeing those sellers in full control, all right, that means what I'm expecting is is we may get this to go lower here overnight, but if it starts to go sideways like this, once we get past 10.30 a.m., 
If you haven't taken profit yet, you're a fool not to. Take some profit, protect your capital, tighten up that stop, all right, because you're going to start seeing things get pretty nasty here tomorrow afternoon before the 2 o'clock FOMC announcement, all right? You've got the short on right now. Targets are below you on gold. You know the strategy. If you're looking for more opportunities, if you happen to not take my advice last night and get short here with the gold, if you're looking for more opportunities here, I've got three more opportunities here on gold. Keep in mind, keep in mind, everything I talk about today, you've got to remember tomorrow's FOMC report. After 2 o'clock, none of this is probably going to still be valid. It'll probably go up, go back down, go up, go down, right? And once it breaks through those a couple times, those levels are going to be bad. Well, they're not going to be bad, but what happens is, is that think of each of these levels as an electric fence. But this electric fence is one that loses electric charge every time it gets tested. So think about a level overhead, right? Think about a level. Think about a cell zone here overhead, right? So here is... Here's an example, just, you know, here's a cell zone overhead, right? So we're going lower, we're going lower, we're going lower, we go up, we test it, right? And I bounce off it, okay? Second test. Now, right, a little bit less. Oh, no, no, no. And then this time, right, the electric shock is basically non-existent, okay? So every time we test a virgin level, Right, I know what type of what type of what type of newsletter is this, JJ? Every time we test an untouched level, there you go, back to PG. We know that, of course, every time it gets hit, it loses a little bit more of that, right? That that charge that you get out of it. In fact, if you ask my opinion, once it's hit it twice, the third, fourth, fifth times, I'm no longer interested. All right, so just remember, what will likely happen tomorrow again. Remember, 10.30, 10.30 a.m., that's your time tomorrow. If we're just hanging out here, slopping around tomorrow at 10.30, get out of your shorts, all right? Well, no, keep your pantalones on, right? But co cover those shorts, all right? I know, right? I thought this was that. I thought this was another type of webinar. But cover your shorts. I know who you're talking. I know who you are. I know who's laughing out there. Cover your shorts and, of course, protect your capital tomorrow after 1030. Unless, again, unless we are seeing lower lows and lower highs. If the consensus is bearish still, we'll continue to be short. But what I'm expecting tomorrow is some analysis paralysis. So early here, tonight and tomorrow, I've got my short here setting up at 1301.1. I've got my short setting up here at 1303.8. I've got my short here at 1308.5. Targets. We will use this low. If that low, all right, if this becomes a low, that will be a target. All right, tough to tell ahead of time, but use that as a target. I got 92.8 and then 87.5 on the way down. The most important thing you want to remember for tomorrow is come out, join me in the live trade room tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. We'll be watching this in real time, and I'll give you guys the best bet for tomorrow's trading as we get through 10.30 a.m. All right, right now we're bearish, looking for chances to sell short here on gold. Don't say I didn't warn you, though. Tomorrow before 10.30, anything goes. But after 10.30, time to buckle down, time to protect our capital, lock up profit, remove the risk. Okay, how about that Rusty? How about that Rusty? Boy, this Russell was all over the place today. Challenging Russell environment, pushing higher. Now, today was a good example. In our trade room, we watched as this price grinded higher just in time for the end of the session. It's right at that tipping point right now for a nice big drop. I recommended we sell the Russell last night's newsletter. We never got the chance to sell it. Right, We did, but it was late in the morning. It was really, really thin. And so we're waiting here right now to see that next move lower on the Russell. Right, So everything's setting up nicely here right now for a short on the Russell. Now, don't try to tell me this chart says that because this chart doesn't say anything right now. You can see here we are right smack dab in the middle. We're right on top of that BMT at 29.5. This is an ugly chart, an ugly chart. Right, very ugly, right in the middle. This Russell looks like it's confused right now. Right, it looks like it's had a little bit too many sips off the part of the punch. It's a little bit, a little bit dizzy here. Right, up and down, up and down, right in the middle here on the Russell. 
Looking forward, though, we can see that we are still bearish. Now, if you remember, we were, of course, down here last night, right? We were down around here this time last night, and my exact words were, we're going to sell this baby down, but you know what happened, right? It kept on grinding higher here. So now, of course, one of the sell zones I gave you last night, here we are, ready to do it again, right? So we're still looking for those shorts right now on the Russell. Nothing on this chart tells me to be a bull right now. There's nothing on this 32 anchor that tells me to be a bull. So I can only say I've got to go with the long-term trend. I've got to go with the trend right now, and that is the downside. Now, one thing you should keep an eye on here, you'll notice, and again, everything I'm going to talk about today has a little bit of that FOMC kind of a you know, side, you know, side view because you want to remember, if we just don't do anything here tonight, if we just sit here, which is definitely possible because FOMC meeting eight times a year, the whole world watches. All right, the whole world watches. So we know that tomorrow is going to be a pretty big news event at 2 p.m. Eastern time, which means that we may not get much personality here out of the Russell. All right, so if that's the case, you'll notice I drew a trend line in off these lows. We've got the top of this channel coming on down. And again, don't forget, make sure you download those bonus charts for tonight. Make sure you stop the video, download the charts, and download all the bonus charts because I've zoomed all the way out on these anchors and I'm showing you some much bigger view that you could use tomorrow after the FOMC announcement comes out. So we have is trend line off the low, trend line coming off the high, or it's a, it's a long-term trend line, and this creates a bit of a wedge. So I'm still looking to sell. But now we know that as we go back into this sell zone here and collapse, now I want to use that low as my first target. All right. So we're going to put a little bit closer target there. I've got to target the low of that wedge. I target the low of the range. And you'll notice there's a long-term channel low down here. There's my final target all the way down. So still looking to sell short on the Russell. We may get it at the 44.4. It may try to push even higher, too. I get the 54.2 all the way up there top as well. All right? But again, don't forget, this trend line here, though, newly drawn trend line, that will be an important factor if we, right, if we go higher instead of going lower. So right now, selling short here on the Russell. And until something changes, right, until something changes here, we have that bias, the downside right now. Remember, though, this Russell today, this Russell today pushed higher, didn't it? So today's Russell, right, today's Russell in the U.S. session, you can see down here is about 930 right there, right? If you recall, we were looking for this price at 930 here to start moving lower. Well, sure enough, we get that higher high, we get that lower low, and now here you go pretty much balanced going into tomorrow morning's news, right, or tomorrow afternoon's news. Pretty much balanced. This is a very good sign of things to come for tomorrow. This tells me here we get a range high at 46.2, range low at 35.1. We can see this price wedge I've drawn in here as well as the fact that this is our range. So what this tells me is, is that with my bearish sentiment right now, right, with my bias to the downside, I want to get below that 35.1, and then I've got these targets waiting for me here, 30.3, 27.1, and 23.8. I've also got, nope, nothing else there. Yep, so those are my three targets down bottom. So right now, i got to be careful here on this Russell, okay? I'm going to be waiting for price to get out of this range. What I'll do is I'll buy the low, I will sell the high. If it happens to go higher, I'm using 46.1 to buy. Again, I'm bearish right now, but that bearishness, once I get above, once I get above this 48.4, I'm going to have some room, right? I can take an aggressive buy here in between these two areas. So above 48.4, 
there's 46.2 right there, right? So we get above the 46.2, get me above that 48.4, right, off the 32 anchor, and we got targets waiting for you overhead. Keep in mind, there is a bullish channel here, so use that bull channel high as your profit targets here for the buys. Very difficult right now to tell you what direction we're going in. The easiest thing to do right now, though, is, is take the long-term trend, which, of course, is still bearish, right, and err on the side of caution and look to be a seller, right? Again, ahead of tomorrow's FOMC report, if we see this price action going sideways tomorrow at 10.30 a.m., batten down the hatches, buy those lows, sell those highs, there'll be nothing more to do besides that. So tomorrow morning, once again, at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, if we're not making higher highs or lower lows by 10.30 a.m. tomorrow morning, you know, what's, you know what the deal is, right? So buy those lows, sell those highs, and treat this like a range-bound market, all right? I doubt we're going to be in the same range tomorrow morning by the time we wake up tomorrow morning in the U.S., but it's definitely a possibility. So I'm erring on the side of caution. I'm looking to sell short. But if you're an aggressive buyer right now, you've got buy targets here above that 46.2, 50.8 and 55.1. Now you know my plan for the Russell. Last but not least, drum roll here, please. We got the mighty crude, black gold, the Texas T, one of my favorite futures markets. You can see here now, just like we suggested last night, if you took my advice last night, guys, easy money selling short on crude overnight whether you were in the Asian session, London session. By the time the U.S. session had begun this morning, we were pretty much trading sideways here in the U.S., just below that 102, right? So as of right now, up around that 191, so we're just below 101 a barrel. You can see that we got quite a bit of support waiting for us down here. We got the BMT and the big round number of 100. Looks pretty bearish to me. Looks pretty bearish to me, right? Got above the key moving averages, couldn't keep it going, and now look out below. Difficult, once again, to predict where tomorrow goes after 10.30 a.m. just because we got those FOMC report due out tomorrow afternoon. Looking at the 32 anchor chart right now, and again, if you're a member of mine, be with me tomorrow morning. We've got inventories tomorrow. Also with the FOMC, I'll give you guys real-time updates on this, what I'm seeing tomorrow morning on crude. The big thing for me, though, tomorrow is that I've got inventories and FOMC, which we'll talk about in a moment. I've got my bearish trend here going lower. Nothing new from this time last night. Right, The last time we saw each other last night, my exact words were, I could easily see $100 a barrel right when they release an announcement tomorrow tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. Couldn't you? Absolutely. So we're still short here on crude. I've got sell zones here once again for you. I got 101.45, 101.70. I've got 101.90 and 102.27. You can see a trend line we drew here overhead. So you should be able to get into some shorts here, right, if you didn't get into it already last night. All right, so again, many of you I know emailing me today congratulating us on the profit we made here overnight. Obviously, though, if you weren't in that short from last night's newsletter, you've got some sell zones here waiting for you again. And I have targets waiting for us here. I get the 100.10. Now, I know it's just a little bit above that 100 even, but that's the target. And then we got 99.40. 9919 9865 and then all the way down to that big round number at 98 even. Again, very difficult to be bullish right now, but don't be surprised if we do go higher in the short term, right? Just like the Russell did today, it may go higher before it goes lower. All right, so I'm not giving up my shorts here until we get, no, that's right. I better keep my pants before I give up my shorts, but I'm not giving up my shorts here until we get about that 102.27, right? 102.27, right? I'm not going to even think about buying here until we get above that 102.27 here as far as the long term goes. In the short term, though, what are we dealing with in the short term? So here's what we have to do right now here on the crude. You can see here we got that new lower low in price all the way down to that 137. We grabbed this short today in the room, but we're very surprised, though, that we didn't get the price to go all the way down, right? So, again, lingering aspects here, tomorrow's 
inventory report Wednesday at 1030 tomorrow's FOMC Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time so we know right now we've got sell zones again waiting for us overhead it's very easy to see we are still bearish we're getting lower lows in price lower highs in price but we do have a bit of a concern here you can see a higher low just recently I drew in this little triangle, this little wedge here, just to kind of remind me here tomorrow that I probably should be looking for right a price wedge if we don't go higher here. So what I would expect to have happen is I would expect us to go higher a little bit here before we go tumbling down. I've got sell zones. Now remember, we gave you guys the sell way up here last night. All right, so we gave you the easy money short. I think my exact I think my exact words were last night you better get into it now before you miss this window of opportunity right that's what happened so price dumped here overnight we saw that nice retrace into a nice reversal line for you we were watching this in real time in the room and then of course now price is here going sideways what I've been looking for is as long as before 1030 a.m. tomorrow number 1030 is my magic number tomorrow morning after 1030 all eyes shift to FOMC I'm looking for price to go higher so I can sell short at 101.22, 101.41. I've got symmetry here at 101.50, and I've got, of course, 101.70 and 101.87 before we go into that, right, that you've already seen that level up top there, 102.27. All right, so once again, same scenario here on crude. Also, I've got some bonus charts for you on crude. If you zoom all the way out in this chart, I get some bonus charts for you right in tonight's download for those charts targets here now targets here I've got 137 100 big round number all right I've got the 9956 okay so three easy targets for you guys below 137 100 big round number 9956 I'm not too comfortable giving a bold statement like I guarantee we're at 100, but I'll tell you right now, it's almost a guarantee before that announcement comes out tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time, we are probably going to be seeing four zeros on our charts, right? We'll be at 100 even tomorrow morning. I would assume, I would assume, all right? Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not gonna guess. I'm still gonna make sure. Again, got short last night. If you're not in that short right now, you got to wait here for price to get up and go back down. Unless, of course, you're with me today and you sold that high. All righty. So don't sell the lows. Sell at the highs. Sell at resistance. Sell at a premium. And again, tomorrow morning, the number is $100 a barrel. The time is 1030 a.m. Eastern time. All right. Great job so far today. Let's get ready for tomorrow with tomorrow's news. Now, before we start out here, I want to remind you we got some major news. We've got industrial production out of our good friends in Japan, 7.50 a.m. or 7.50 p.m. Eastern Time this evening. So that will be something to put a shot in the arm for our Asian markets here tonight, overnight. Then tomorrow morning, Wednesday, July 30th. Remember, we do have 31 days of the month of July. Not the end of the month yet, but we do have a Wednesday, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., kind of middle of the road news reports the big report tomorrow morning in Europe is at 5 a.m. Eastern time we get the we get the uh, economic sentiment right kind of like consumer confidence right something like that so we got the 5 a.m. tomorrow morning in the ECB right or in the or, or in the London session tomorrow morning be ready for that and then just after the U just after the US session opens up we've got CPI out of Germany which is kind of odd we don't see that very often it's very late for, for London-based news. We've got a very minor report. Now, don't confuse these two reports. Okay, don't confuse these two. Wednesday's ADP employment report is not the same thing as Friday's non-farm payroll, although I swear they want you to think it is, right? ADP getting some great advertising there. ADP, by the way, is a very, uh, very popular, maybe not popular, but very well-known payment processing company here in the US and of course they, pay, they they of course process all the payroll checks and stuff like that so they're gonna be producing their employment numbers tomorrow morning at 8 15 all eyes though before 10 30 will be tomorrow's GDP at 8 30 we then have of course I know and it keeps on rolling we got news tomorrow at 10 30 
crude oil inventories. Now, I'm telling you right now, though, crude inventories is usually a very important news report. But because of what time it is tomorrow, I would expect it to be a sleeper. I wouldn't expect to see a lot because after 10.30 a.m., yeah, and again, I'll be a broken record here tonight. But after 10.30 a.m. tomorrow morning, all eyes are shifting to that FOMC meeting announcement. Okay, can't wait to hear from my gal Yellen, right? Just love her to pieces. Just love her to pieces. I really do enjoy listening to her, and I think she's a great uh, asset for our country, and I think she's a great job at the ECB or at the uh, at the Fed. But uh, bottom line is, tomorrow we got 5 a.m. economic sentiment out of Europe. That'll be big news. We've got GDP at 8:30 a.m. tomorrow. That will be big news. And then, of course, we do have inventories at 1030, but in my humble opinion, that'll be overshadowed tomorrow by the FOMC report at 2 p.m. Eastern time. One last thing. If you have not traded an FOMC day before, I would highly recommend tomorrow should not be your first time on a live account. Tomorrow is not a day to try out new ideas. Tomorrow is not a day to increase position size. Tomorrow is not a day to go test out that new fancy gaming mouse you purchased on a live account. Okay, this is not the time to be doing it. What I always recommend is, is that until you've seen six of these days, I wouldn't go anywhere near trading a real account tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. Be very, very careful after 10.30 tomorrow, all right? Tomorrow afternoon, it will be dead until 2 p.m. Eastern time, and then you'll see the fireworks go off. This is one of the biggest news reports we get. The only thing bigger comes 48 hours later from the employment situation on Friday morning. It's the only thing that's more important than FOMC. So we have the two biggest news events that we ever get as day traders tomorrow and Friday morning. So be careful tomorrow. By all means, we're trading regular price action. Well, hopefully regular price action, but we're trading as normal before 10.30 a.m. After 10.30, we batten down the hatches. We brace for the hurricane coming through here or the hurricane, the tornado coming through because that's pretty much what it'll be, right? It'll come out of nowhere and it'll be gone within a few hours tomorrow. But tomorrow afternoon, though, is not for the faint of heart. All right? It's not for the faint of heart. I wouldn't even recommend you watch it. Right? You, you'll learn more by using market replay and going back and practicing your patterns and practicing your setups. If you do trade tomorrow's FOMC announcement, do it in a simulator unless you've seen more than six of these announcements in your career. All right, guys? Once again, if you want real-time updates on this stuff, guys, Come out and see me tomorrow morning in my live trade room. I'll walk you right through everything we've talked about here today so far. And before I let you guys go, don't forget, head on over to schooltrade.com, join our free trial. You will learn more in our free trial in a matter of hours than you will in any other paid website out there, right, or some chat room, right, with some guy calling trades. We offer three levels of membership, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. We offer, we offer uh, membership financing. We've got many different uh, flexible terms here you guys can get started with. And we offer a great free trial with a special invitation for you guys to come out and join me in my live trade room so you can see exactly how we trade. Don't forget, I got someone sitting by here 24 hours a day to help you guys out if you need any help at all. Don't forget, guys, share this information with a friend. Be careful tomorrow. Don't forget to download today's newsletter charts for all those bonus charts, right, jam-packed there with value for you guys tonight. And come out and see me tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern time in our live trade room, and we'll sort it all out in real time. Once again, my name is Joseph James from the entire team here at our corporate headquarters in Los Angeles, California, a very nice sunny afternoon here in L.A., Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being a part of the newsletter. Keep up the great work. Be well, be happy, and be on time tomorrow to that trade room at 8 a.m. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.